It's uh, been three months since you put out this record. Uh -huh. Three years now since, I guess, the, the breakup that inspired it. I imagine that you're in a different headspace now than you were when you wrote it or yeah. when you were going through it. So can you take us back to the time a little bit and just paint the picture of what was going on? Well, <clears throat> um, you know, I woke up one morning and, uh, you know, was starting my day the usual way I do with breakfast and, you know, preparing to go to work. And uh, my uh, ex-wife's doing the same thing. And it was wonderful morning. And, you know, the days before just seemed great. We got along well, we never fought. Hmm. And um, she left the house before I did that day. And I'll forever have the image of her walking down the stairs to head out the door in my head with a big, bright smile that I loved her for on her face and waving as she went down the stairs. And then, uh, you know, an hour or so later, I left to head to work. And then when, when I come back, I found the note that you uh, alluded to earlier on the show, uh, her ring sitting on the desk with a piece of paper next to it, just saying, don't forget to feed the cat. Didn't understand what it meant at first. Yeah. But when I thought about, well, wait a minute, why is her ring here? It uh, came crashing down and I found out that, you know, she not only left the house not to return, she left the country altogether and uh, haven't haven't seen her since. That's pretty harsh. Yeah, it was it was it was tough and it's something that I didn't see coming at oh. all. And um, it was it was tough to know where to turn with the way I was uh, feeling at the time. And sometimes yeah. finding help, well, help can be a tough thing to ask for. And sometimes even if you have the courage to ask, it, it can be hard to uh, find. And so I did lean on my friends quite a bit, but through a lot of it, I just sort of had to work through it on my own and not knowing what else to do in those times I wrote. Well, it seems like, you know, such a, a challenging situation to have been in. And I can understand why you would turn to your art, turn to writing music, to have an outlet. But it seems like another step beyond that to decide then to release that music, to put it out into the world and, you know, bury yourself in that way. Why Why did you go there? What, what, what pushed you to do that? Well, that wasn't my intention in the beginning, okay. to be honest with you. I, I started writing and recording stuff strictly to help myself out. And I just mm -hmm. kind of thought that it would be something that would get tucked under my bed and, you know, maybe never see the light of day. I just knew that it would help me not only to do the writing, but just to give myself something to do every day to go into the studio and just do the work, get my mind off things maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but after the songs were finished, well, my the first thing I did after that, after spending a bit of time with them, the first person I thought to share them with was my ex-wife. And so I contacted really? her, yeah. And I sent her the album. Um, didn't really say much. I just said, you know, here's, here's what I've been working on. And she wrote back saying, this is, this is strong work. I think this is some of the best stuff you've done. You know, what are you thinking? I said, well, I'm not thinking much. She said, well, you know what? I think, I think you should think about sharing it. And having not thought about it before then, hearing her say that first gave me the idea that, okay, well, you know, maybe we're not the only ones to have ever gone through this, so maybe it is worth sharing and getting a bit of dialogue going there. What was it like for you, though, on an emotional level? Like, you're putting yourself in this very vulnerable position by reaching back out to her, and it's on the basis of music, and you're communicating that way, but you, you had to have been kind of looking for something else. Well, you know, that search, I suppose, is reflected in the songs on the album, um, because it's a real... I but I mean, like, reaching out to her, weren't you expecting her, like, just tell me something or <clears throat> connect yeah. with me on a more emotional level than just yeah. feedback on my music? Yeah, I was I was hoping, and I didn't get quite as, as much as I was hoping for. Um, and I kind of figured in the end, well, it's her prerogative to talk mm -hmm. as much or as little as she uh, wanted to. Um, and I wanted to involve her in the you know, process as much as possible. I even tried to write a few songs on this record from her perspective and not only from my own, um, which why is why it was important for me to get her thoughts mm -hmm. on things. And I hoped that it would lead to a bigger discussion of, um, you know, what happened with us. And it 
didn't, which is <clears throat> why primarily, like I said, I, I kind of had to work through this on my own. I've gotten little glimpses. We have stayed in, in yeah. touch uh, to a degree. But and, how do you feel about that, that that's just left hanging? Well, I mean, that's the hardest part for sure. And if there's anything I could change about the situation, I would love to just, you know, be able to talk about it mm-hmm. more. That's for sure. Well, sorry, man. Um, you did reach out to her. You involved her in the process of putting out the music. Now it's out there. Do you feel like you have moved forward in your own journey, in your own healing? I feel like I have. Yeah. And, you know, it's been a few years. I did manage to find some professional help because it, it really, you know, did take a tough emotional toll, toll. Writing the songs helped. I also wrote a book, which helped a lot. I figured I really need to just sort through some feelings, even some, you know, darkness in my own head and try to understand where that uh, comes from. But I'll have days where I think, you know what, I think, I think I'm okay and I'm ready to move on. And then just these unbelievably sad dreams keep coming back to me once in a while about my wife. And sometimes just enough time will pass where I think, hey, I'm completely out of the woods. And then just another one. And it's amazing the things that one's brain can conjure to just, uh, you know, kick you right, right in the butt. I had just the saddest dream just a few nights ago, even. And so that's the last thing for me, I think, is just hoping that these sad dreams stop at some point. Right. Well, it's a journey. It's a process. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have the music there. Uh, at some points, it sounds like you're actually doing the therapy in the recording studio. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. like a, the the lead song, Gates of Hell, for yeah, instance. Right? that's right. You know, you're, you're shouting, you know, you're, you're taking it there. Yeah, as I mentioned, what really helped me get through that time was friends. And they say you really find out who your friends are when you're going through tough oh, stuff. Sure. And one friend, it's, and it's, in my experience anyway, it's not always the ones you expect. You know, it's, it's uh, someone who just really steps up and, and shows you that they're more of a friend than you ever thought before. And one such friend, my uh, great friend Melissa, was explaining to me that she had been experimenting with um, something called scream therapy. I think it's the same thing that John Lennon, John Lennon. did with primal scream therapy that yeah. uh, you hear him exercising a bit on the Plastic Ono Band record. She said, you know, I think this might work for you. I've always been a very introverted person. It never really comes out of me in the, those big ways, but I thought maybe I should try this. And I thought furthermore, maybe I should challenge myself to try this out on a record. So I went into the studio and explained to the people I'm working with, I'm going to try this. It might be a little scary. I'm really going to need you to help me get there because I don't think it's going to be easy for me to get there. But on that first song, Gates of Hell in the chorus, I just you let it fly. Then. And it I got to say, it felt really good. There is something I guess of, of of something resembling an exorcism when you do something, just just scream as loud as you can. It physically, it kind of feels good, but it does feel like you're getting some darkness out of you to do that. Well, it seems like there'd be two things going on there. Like a, on the one level, it's your catharsis. You're getting it out. You know, you're working through it as you're talking about. But at the same time, you're making a record. So you got to be thinking about the aesthetic value of it. So was it yeah. like, all right, that felt really good and now I feel better, but... Let's do another take so it sounds good. There was a bit of that. And sometimes I knew that I couldn't and shouldn't rely on myself to make those decisions. Excuse me. So I would ask the engineer to say, look, if it's not quite what it needs to be, if it doesn't curdle the blood quite enough, let me know. We'll do another take. But let's make sure to record this song last because I might not have much of a voice left. So that's the way we did it. And it took a whole night basically to get first just to get to the point that I felt I needed to get to. And it wasn't just physically with the screaming, emotionally as well. I mean, you just can't have one without the other. And then to get it to sound right, it took a long time. It was a tough night and, you know, glad that it was the last thing I had to do on the record. Well, thank you so much for being so emotionally honest on the record, but also for indulging us here in this interview today. Well, uh, thanks for taking the time. It's good to talk to you. And, um, Although it is a tough subject matter, and I, like I said, I know I'm not the only one to have gone through it, but I had a lot of fun here today, too, so thanks for having me by.